أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول الله ولد أمري منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان المسكين الظالم والجاهة أما بفر ذا غريس أب الله زي وجال أن نحن 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 the advent of the arrival of immense deceit, what they understand as the, the Dajjal in other cultures, the Antichrist because they are a Christian nation and whatever they're practicing is anti-Christian. And Dajjal for the Muslim nation that there would be a deceit, great deceit great fitnas and difficulties upon the earth and these pandemics, sicknesses, viruses, vaccinations, all of these from whatever energy they're bringing, whatever beings are attached with these energies that are coming and affecting mankind, these stages that they would go through of what shaitan has prepared for his minions and what he has intended for this earth. When he builds a people to have a desire and he feeds through their senses, their hearing, they hear these words, they hear these desires, they hear all these, these words from their songs and what they want and what they want to go out and take. and, and and, uh, and give, then shaitan fills their eyes with these desires of a lifestyle that's beyond 99% of people. So he's feeding their, their senses to hear it, to see it and most of all their heart to want it. And an abundance of these senses of dunya and desire for dunya and wanting all the things that 99% of people can't have and it was intentional so that one day he would release them onto the street and they would go to take it. And that would be an immense fitna on this earth in which Prophet described the one sitting is better than the one standing, he's in a better condition because at least he's sitting. The one standing is even in a better condition than the one walking because when he's moving now he's in a fitna, he can't get out of that location, out of that area, out of that difficulty. So this type of fitna that coming, the earth has not seen that type of scale of difficulties. We live in a time that is of an unimaginable nature that when we talked about sicknesses or, or flus that would come and difficulties would come, no one had imagined that the whole world would shut down from a fear of, of not seeing anything. And uh, oil tankers stop, factories stop, nations stop, travel stop, these are not regular times. So what difficulties are foretold of coming and events that are coming, they're not something that the mind can understand nor should put any type of logic on it and say that, oh it has always been like this. It has never been like this and what's coming is not something that is imaginable as, as far as what it has been before. The immensity of the crime. And the immensity of, of the bad desires of people and that's not even with all of the spiritual effect of what shaitan is putting within insan of these sicknesses, of these difficulties, of, of these energies and to the extent of how violent these people will be is just an opening and then we begin to see that unfold upon the earth that there are places in these areas and fancy areas that they have opened up their prisons and they use the pandemic as an excuse and they release people. Why they release people? 
to, to go back uh, onto the streets with this type of characteristics and these types of, of difficulties and everything that is coming. Means the extent of negativity that coming upon the earth requires then an immense amount of faith. That every isharat that comes and every news that comes and every sign that comes there must be a wisdom within that sign. If we believe, we look at the news, we look at the outward signs, Allah says, I show you upon the horizon before I show what's within yourself. Some people don't have the ability to sit make their tafakkur to understand that you know what Allah is going to show them in their heart of events that are coming. So it's much easier to turn on the news. He said, in the middle of the daylight they're robbing their restaurants, they're shooting people in broad daylight, highly secure areas with fancy police. They do whatever they want knowing the pr prisons are closed, nobody want, wants them in a prison. So nobody's going to respond, everyone's more secure to guard themselves than to go out and get shot for something. So th this is now escalating, escalating. All the big VIP people, they call them the 1% people, they're already hiding. They left their positions in their companies, they're hiding out somewhere in, in woods and in caves and in, in bunkers for whatever they are planning to, you know, happen upon the earth. So many, many difficult things are all around for the believer to keep an understanding of these isharats, to be vigilant over what they're seeing. That's why then the emphasis on the teaching is of the spiritual connection. So that they see these signs and they motivate themselves to be connected, that connect your heart, learn how to connect your heart, learn how to sit patiently and ask for the light of the shaykh to reflect, Ya Rabbi that you said to be with kunu ma sadiqeen, to have a taqwa and keep the company of, of your people. I'm asking from, from your power Ya Rabbi let me to sit with them spiritually. Let their light to reflect like a satellite into my heart and begin to take away the rust of my ignorance and allow this light of reflection from Allah So it's not a separate light, that's why we said the satellites. When people thinking, oh is the shaykh's light coming as a separate light? No, we said before that the Qamarun, Fardani reality, all these realities are to show you that in life we have to just be a polished mirror. So holy hadith is Prophet described that the mu'min is a, is a mirror to his brother. And just from that hadith is the immense reality of reflection and satellites and, and reflective energy. The Prophet was describing that, that your mu'min amongst you they're like a reflection for you. If you sit with them they will reflect what Allah has put upon their heart. And Prophet's humility is not to even mention himself in that reality but he's the Sultan of Mu'mins and Mohsins and all these titles. What he's teaching them and saying that what Allah has sent to me I'm reflecting to you, my job is like a mirror. Not one who possesses something separate from Allah because la shariq but the one whom reflecting Allah most perfected. And that's what these you know these, these square headed mind people they don't understand. Allah's la ilaha illallah is the only thing that exists. But where is that reflecting? It reflects perfectly to Muhammadun Rasulullah that's why the kalimah and the Zulfiqar is, is showing that La ilaha illallah reflects perfectly to the reality because of the khuluq and the character of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result Prophet takes that love, takes that reality from Allah and gives as a gift to his nation, just praise me one time, make one salawat upon me, my soul. I'm coming to you ten times means I'm reflecting now whatever Allah sent to me 
I'm reflecting to you free. Ten times eternally we have no understanding, there's no time with Allah This ten reflections is of what reality? We know that we taught that Manzil Qur'an that Prophet is the house of the Holy Qur'an. The uncreated speech of Allah will be reflecting onto your soul with one Guru the Sharif. So then imagine then the lovers who some people call shaykhs, other call ahbab and habibs. They're habibs that they have understood that, they reached that, they are in that, they've been dressed by that, they've been destined for that, that they have so much love that Prophet is so much reflecting of his reality upon them. And as a they are the mirrors of Sayyidina Muhammad upon this earth and throughout the heavens. If they passed away then they're eternal mirrors everywhere. And if they're living upon this earth their job is a mirror and that's from the hadith. It's a way you guys don't talk about hadith. If we talked about hadith you wouldn't understand it anyways the square-headed people because they're trying to hear if they had this hadith translated from Arabic to English and that's not what it said. That's not what that alim tried to explain to you because they don't understand the reality of these hadiths. That when Prophet saying that the mu'min is a mirror for his brother, they don't even have the slightest understanding what does a mirror mean because they don't understand a satellite system and they don't think in, in the terms of energy. Otherwise why Prophet is describing mirrors in, in a, if it was based on physicality? That had like no logical sense to say that you're physically a mirror and I'm a mirror, what does that mean? But when you understood satellites and you understood a little bit of silence, do you know how much the quality of the reflective mirrors of a satellite… 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 <laughs> there is a show on Discovery Channel and you can Google like what is the technology of the Hubble space? The mirrors that they've invented for these devices, how many years it took them to develop and polish the mirror and the strength of the mirror that it reflects millions of miles. So satellite mirroring and their technology is all about the reflective nature of the mirror. It only became perfected as their logic and science was elevated. So means for us it was a great isharat how Prophet described, don't think that two dull people who have no faith in their heart are mirroring anything heavenly. The science understood you had to be in a vacuum sealed room, you had to be in a decontaminated environment, you had to have had technology for how to make these mirrors and these glasses at such a pure level that they would reflect the light with such an immensity that it would magnify the reflection of the light. Just basic science show you'd watch and then you would understand the depth of what Prophet is describing. That this reality is not just two cuckoo people get in front of each other and they're going to reflect the heavens. But the one whom sat and purified himself and the iron within his body, his iron is not rusted and dirtied. He did his hijama, he did his zikr, zikrullahi tatma'in al These were all the advanced realities of tafakkur. That he purifies his heart, he does zikr upon his heart, he purifies his iron in his body. And the iron is the only part of the body that holds the nazma and the qudra and the energy that we are uh, collecting as energy beings. He cleans it, cleans it, cleans it, cleans it, purifies it until he's so reflective that Allah upgrades his entire being and that the energy that coming on to him is reflecting now like a laser that it comes from Prophet His love goes back to Prophet by his love and his salawat and the awrads and zikrs that he's doing. And then Prophet takes that love 
and that light and magnifies it again, then now you study the reality of lasers. At how many times and, and what speed and velocity is Prophet taking this love, magnifying it and sending it back fast into the heart of that servant. Because that servant's not making one durood but they're making 20,000 salawats a day. So that Prophet ﷺ's soul never leaves. What type of love is happening with this love that reflecting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, they become heated and energized with every salawat. Why? Because Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ magnifies the power. That's now the study of lasers that when a laser shoots to a mirror it takes it and sends it back more powerful and sends it back even faster and then the strength of a laser is the amount of times that it can reflect the light back and forth between its mirrors. That's why when you turn a laser on is some lasers can cut through wood and steel their technology. Now they have a laser from the earth can take down a satellite 270 miles in space. They have lasers that can cut through wood, through steel, through anything. How is that happening? It's a light that's bouncing back at a million times or, or 10 million times per second through mirrors. So once you understood mirroring from this holy hadith, then you understood that when Prophet's light is coming to you, he's a laser. He's coming with an immense power and you take that love, reflect it back with another salawat. Take that love, reflect it back with another salawat. Then what happens with these habaibs? and these ashiqeen, they are very powerful lasers for Sayyidina Muhammad And a day will come when people will understand what that means. That time not yet, right? But when shaitan opens his lasers, Allah will open his lasers. Because shaitan has his lasers, he's making all sorts of weaponry with light, to harm people with light, to burn people with light. All these UFO, these jinn, all their weaponry is light because they have all the artificial light that they hit people with. They don't shoot a pistol at people, they have light and they use light and they manipulate light, they move with light. All of these are in the tafakkur, all of these realities are in the tafakkur so that the servant is built. When the servant is built and has faith, has love and muhabbat, has the good khuluq and good characteristics, then Allah says, then the other hadith is what? Be weary of the, of the vision of a believer, the firasa, for he looks at you with the light of Allah What could that possibly be understood by people? who don't even know the purpose of wanting to meditate because they don't see the need, they don't sense a danger, they don't see an objective because insan are more reactive. First let me get beaten a little bit then maybe I'll believe what you're saying. Proactive again is the one whom, no, no they, they believe and they, they want to experience Allah's might and majesty. They want to understand that when Allah says, Wa lakal karam na banyan, that we have honored you. So then I just describe satellites, I describe lasers, I describe the, all the jinn have these technologies. So in Allah above all of that, Wa lakal karam na banyan. I have honored Bani Adam. Means that if you thought the light and the laser was impressive, I've honored them. If you thought the satellite was impressive, I've honoured them. If you thought the jinn nations were impressive, I have honoured them, this Bani Adam. Means why? Because I'm going to be the hearing of that servant. What does that mean? I'm going to be the seeing on that servant. Means what? When Allah open up for the servant and the, the reality is Inna ladina yubayyunaka yubayyunullah When Allah said, my hand is, is there, my ears are on them, my eyes on them, my breath is on them. 
they're, my feet are on them means that they are servants of Allah servanthood of Allah how can that be understood of what Allah going to open for that servant? What type of power comes through their eyes when Allah activates the laser within their heart? They merely look at something and they can bring everything down. That means unimaginable what Allah Allah's greatness when we say Allahu Akbar above anything you've been taught Allah is even much more Akbar that it can't even be understood the greatness of Allah And this is all Allah So when people are writing, oh is this like a shirk, is this like a tooth, is this like a kindergarten type of mentality? All of this is from La ilaha illallah. It only reflects to Muhammadun Rasulullah There can be no shariq and no partner, no two. If anyone thinks that they can get that power and that reality without being at the threshold of Sayyidina Muhammad then you're telling me Allah sending His La ilaha illallah to you, to them, to him, to her, it's no. Because you're not the kalima and they're not the kalima and the only kalima is La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah So all power and might of Allah all support and quwa of Allah is in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So our light was to clean, to purify, to make our salawat and begin to learn this tafakkur so that the shaykhs can reflect the ocean of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah into the hearts of people so that their eyes can transfer, their ears can transfer, their breath can transfer, their hands can transfer, their feet can transfer. They are the satellites of that reality reflecting on earth these Divinely codes. That's why they are of a satellite reality, they're not a mobile phone. A satellite reality they take their uloom from the heavens, not from a book, not from a, a Google page. They have nothing to do with the dunya as a source of knowledge for them because not their light comes from this dunya, not their knowledge comes from this dunya, nothing of this reality has anything to do with dunya. It all comes from heavens and as a result it merely moves upon this physical plane. Those whom have not achieved that their whole knowledge is from dunya, they have no connection to satellites. I watch one of these big alams, he was trying to teach about the sunnah of sitting because like I said they, they run out of what to talk about. So now they want to talk about how Prophet sat. Oh okay, uh, how… what are you going to do with that? Why don't you describe what the sunnah of the ring is and what's its power? What's the sunnah of the asa? They said the Prophet had asa, that's it. They don't know anything else. The Prophet had a turban, why had a turban? What was the purpose of the turban? What was the reality of the ring? What is the reality of the asa? What was the whole reality of every sunnah that came was the immense qudra and the immense power system. So these different, an external one whom learning from dunya only has dunya understanding and they're not receiving a satellite transmission, they're not receiving from the people of Malakut and that's the difference, completely different. They're at it at 99% of them are dunya level understanding. The 1% are the people of Malakut and the reality of Malakut are Ishraqiyoon. Their purpose on this earth is to keep pushing and dispensing these realities, these lights, these knowledges. It requires to ihtiba and follow them, listen to them. Don't try to double guess their guidance. The danger of becoming close to them or familiar with the shaykh is that you maybe double guess his guidance and that's not going to help you at all. 
and that's going to cause a difficulty for that servant because they begin to like the people of Mecca they begin to stop making their hajj and that's a danger, that's a danger. So there's always a hikmah and a wisdom of a difference and separation so that don't rely on a physicality, do your spiritual practices, listen to every talk that's coming, make notes on every talk. These notes will change your kitab, they'll change your reality. Put into practice what you've been taught, use your, your abilities and your spiritual understandings, connect spiritually with them. All of these are essential to activate all of these senses and these energies and all these teachings that they're teaching. But if somebody wants to come and use their, their mind and their brain and before you know it everything shuts off and the person never reaches and that's okay then they just die that way and they'll be taught in the grave. But one who wants to achieve that reality in dunya then they had to have learned early in their stage, shut off everything, shut off your head. And that's why the first zikr and the zikr of all realities is, La ilaha illallah, la to your head. That don't use your head to think what the shaykh is saying, how is like this, how is like that. If it already went into the thought process, shaitan is already there and destroyed that knowledge. It has to go, La to the head, ilaha illallah. That these uloom and these knowledges of light and realities, the teaching and accompanying them. In whatever capacity the person is accompanying to whatever they feel is their relationship with the shaykh, none of that matters other than to ihtiba and follow. And that their following is pure and that the knowledges are entering into their heart and not moving through their head and analyzing and thinking about it and maybe not thinking about it because then they don't achieve anything. And they say that, oh I, I sat here so many times and I didn't achieve anything. And there are people who are at a distance achieving immense amounts of realities because the hunger they have and the distance that's between them and the shaykh. They're taking it, they're reading it, they're practicing it, they're putting it and implementing it and that's all a part of the system. And, and those whom are supporting online all of that support is essential for this whole process. This is a part of one's belief. You support what you believe in, you participate to whatever degree that you have and Allah has given you an ability that is your commitment, that is your jihad. In time of Prophet he was going into battle two times a day with sahabi and that was their struggle. There was no life insurance, there was no time for family, there was no time for nothing. And in the equivalent of our life and our time People's greatest jihad is the parting with money. So when they don't want to support and they don't want to, to go to the store, they don't want to participate in this, they don't want to participate in that but they want Isma Azam, the, the greatest name of Allah <laughs> That's not going to happen that way. <laughs> this, is a, this is a path in which the, the servant gives, 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 does, 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 serve, serve, serve onto Allah find satisfaction within the character of that person. And it has an immense reality when they open up all of these abilities, either they want to type, they want to write, they want to shop, they want to give, they want to do a part of the charity. Whatever way they want to participate it's an opening for them to interact with the community, with the shaykh, with the emails that are going out and the dialogue that's going out and has a, a very important reality because you get to see how quickly people are angered, how quickly people are impatient, how quickly people are demanding and, and, and all the bad characteristics where they think that they're, oh so fantastic shaykh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm very patient person. It's okay when you think you're patient but Allah wants to test your patience. And that's what's important, not when we think we're humble, I'm, I'm very humble. It's not you say like that, as soon as you say like that then wait until Allah humiliates you. Humbleness is not you thinking you're humble, humbleness is when Allah humiliates you and you stay exactly who you are, 
pure, clean, you don't have to answer yourself back, you don't have to vindicate yourself and, and be humiliated in Allah's way. So these realities are not easy to achieve and that's why the shaykhs, they're the shaykhs and that's why they've been through so many years of difficulty and that's why they share from their teachings so people can understand. They didn't just get somewhere but they had a whole life journey of difficulties and testings and everything they're describing they've done at a thousand times more because they can't even describe that for people. Nobody would even understand and run away what they've done and they would think that they're crazy for doing that. And whatever they did Allah found satisfaction in it and gave them what Allah wanted to give to that servant. So alhamdulillah. Our way are the ways of, of reality and truth, whatever they talk they did it. Whatever they're talking of realities they're in it. It's not from somebody else's book and, and somebody else's memoirs and from his shaykh's teachings, no his shaykh if he taught it because most of this is not even from a shaykh's teaching, it's not written in any book anywhere. We said from Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah from Mawlana Shah Naqshband, if, if a servant can reach to that reality, Mawlana Shaykh may open one of 12,000 realities for Naqshbandi guide. That they are from the 7,007 Naqshbandi saints upon this earth. If Mawlana, Shaykh, Mawlana Shah Naqshband opens for that servant, he may open one of 12,000 ulums and knowledges. So that's not something common, that's not something common from ilmu huruf, from tafakkur, from uh, all these different realities on Nu Muhammad. That's not something that is just you know uh, every Naqshbandi center, is there another Naqshbandi center down in, in Kuala Lumpur? No, there's not a Naqshbandi center on this earth teaching these realities in this format it has a knowledge of numbers, the knowledge of letters. The knowledge of tafakkur, knowledge of the levels of the heart, knowledge of uh, all, all those realities? No, this is not a you know, dime store where everybody has it and everywhere you go Naqshbandiya has it. This is just the, a gift from Allah from Prophet And whatever is coming is coming and whatever knowledges are there. And if they got it from a shaykh, their shaykh, some of the knowledges of that reality then alhamdulillah that was from their writing and whatever their shaykh poured into their heart of those ulums. And from coming from Mawlana Shah Naqshband and whatever knowledges he wants to convey from their family inheritance of Imam Ali salam and whatever he wants to convey. But these knowledges in these uloom was the reality of all of their practices and that's why they teach this system of practices. They teach this way of, of be sincere, be supportive, be participating, write these knowledges, let it to burn into your reality. So alhamdulillah it's not available everywhere. If Allah open for, for you to be able to hear this teaching, participate on these channels then alhamdulillah. This is a one fountain from the heavenly fountains that is available on this earth. And many walk by it not seeing it, not even in their reality to stop to look at it. So this is a ni'mat from Allah Once you traverse the world of realities and, and, and tariqah realities, you see Muhammadan realities are very rare upon this earth. That's why that the preciousness is being described not as a sense of bragging astaghfirullah but that we don't understand how precious this is. And that's the sad part and that's the shame they feel in the presence of Prophet that you gave this responsibility but they don't treat it with what it is and don't know how to change that. So then their way is just the continuously gently reminding, gentle reminder, gentle reminder that these are the realities and haqqaiqs from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and the one dispensing it has to be respected and the knowledges that are coming have to be respected. So alhamdulillah, InshaAllah give us all more and more and keep us to be safe through all these difficulties and to, to be conscious of many, many dangers that are coming 
and it's necessary to build oneself to that holy hadith, Hadith al-Qudsi that Allah is satisfied with their fard and all their obligatory worshipness and as a result of sincerity oceans Allah open their hearing, open their seeing, open their breathing, open their hands and open their feet and made them Rabbaniyoon. So much so that they have the will of Allah within their heart and they can say, Kun fayakun, inshaAllah dress us all from that immense light and bless us all with that immense light inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.